Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brennan Bias from ChuchuCheckIt.com and welcome to another Tutorial Tuesday. In this week's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys a plugin that I have seriously been trying to find for like two or three years, ever since I first saw like uh, some of the results that this plugin can show on um, some random pictures that I saw like on Google or wherever I was browsing. And uh, chances are that you guys have also seen this effect. You just haven't really realized it before. It's uh, it's usually applied to stuff like uh, like cat pictures or tigers or just something like that. But um, uh, we're going to be applying this to some different kinds of pictures uh, as well as maybe a cat picture. But uh, before I lose your guys' attention with my uh, my rambling here, let me show you a really quick example of you know what this filter can do to a picture. So uh, I've just grabbed this uh, random image off of uh, the stock exchange. You know, got some free to use images on there, so you guys can uh, you know download this yourselves if you guys want because it's nice and free. And this is what this image looks like with Fractali supplied. Boom. <laughs> So I, I still have no idea how to go about explaining why I like this effect. I, I guess I just really enjoy like these, uh, these streaks of light that go through the image because I just find them unique in, in one way or another. But um, anyway, uh, <laughs> rather than just going on trying to explain why I like this, how about I just you know show you guys uh, the filter. Well, actually, I take that back. Um, something that I want to do for you guys because um, it gave me some issues at first is uh, I want to show you guys how to actually go about installing this plugin because the first time I tried to get this installed, it ended up um, it, not, it wasn't working for one reason or another. So I'm going to show you guys some tricks that I had that kind of helped me through this process. So uh, real quick, we'll go to edits, we'll go to preferences. And we'll go to plugins here. And um, you'll see that there is an option up top called additional plugins folder. And by default, that is turned off, but uh, we're going to use this sucker to our advantage. Because um, one common problem that uh, I ended up coming across now that I'm you know, downloading new filters and stuff like that is that sometimes filters aren't made for your version of Photoshop. And I'm not talking about like CS4, CS5, CS6. I haven't really had problems with that lately. I'm talking about the difference between 32-bit and 64-bit. And the problem is, is that if you have a 64-bit plugin, it's only going to work on 64-bit version of Photoshop. Likewise, if you have a 32-bit version of a plugin, it's only going to work on the 32-bit version of Photoshop. And coincidentally, I'm on 64-bit, and so I ended up having some problems because I had downloaded like a 32-bit version without realizing it. So anyway, to simplify the whole whether or not um, you know 32-bit and 64-bit are going to to work with each other, uh, we are going to use this additional plugins folder to our advantage here. So uh, basically, what I ended up doing was I made a folder within. Uh, uh, let's see, if you just go into like your libraries and into your documents, uh, I just made a folder in there called Photoshop Plugins. So relatively straightforward. And I did this in both the 64-bit and 32-bit version of Windows. So an easy way to get to both of those is by going up to your little start menu and just typing in Photoshop. And so you got 64-bit and you got the, the regular version there. So do that for both versions of Photoshop there. And basically just install all of your plugins and all of your filters and stuff into that folder. And so that way, if you um, open up Photoshop and that plugin isn't there, you simply just switch over to your other version of Photoshop and it should show up, okay? So install your plugins into this folder and um, that should just be nice and easy to do. All right, so uh, let's go in and mess with some pictures, shall we? So let's uh, let's go ahead and grab an image. Um, I have another picture of an eyeball, but I already demonstrated that. So let's go with like uh, this cat here because that really seems to be like the popular thing is doing this uh, effect on cats. <laughs> so um, without further ado, filter, and we'll go down to Redfield because that is the the company that makes this. And we will use Fractalius. 
So when you open Fractalius for the first time, this should be the uh, the overall scene that you should uh, see here. And we've got a bunch of sliders and stuff and like, like little buttons that you can click here and there. But uh, the first thing that I want to focus on are the presets because in my personal opinion, these presets are a great way of um, like, like getting to a good starting point on the effect that you want to create because these presets have quite a bit of variation to them. So like the first one here, Art Flakes, or I think that's Art Flakes, looks like it. <laughs> you can see that this thing is just like really freaking bizarro, but you never know, maybe someone out there will really like that. And you can just start, you know, messing with like some of the settings here and make it look a little bit more mellowed out. But anyway, you just can kind of click through some of these and see what you like, see what you don't like. Obviously, everyone's going to have their own opinions, but uh, personally, some of my favorite ones are like slow motion. And I'll just show that real quick. Uh, so slow motion is one of my favorites. I think it looks really, really cool there. And the other one that I use most is Glow 100. And that's kind of the one that I'll be demonstrating throughout this, uh, this tutorial here. So I'm just going to start off with Glow 100 here. And uh, I guess I'll just give you guys a, a quick little rundown on what each of these sliders do. So uh, first thing that you'll notice is that uh, there are two columns here with the same, uh, you know, like sliders, sharpness, line width, radius, diffusion, depth, scarify, and noise. The reason that there are two of these is um, it's basically because that there is two sets of these lines going on at the same time. So if you were to mess with these, uh, these sliders, so maybe I'll just amp up the sharpness on these suckers. And you'll notice that these thicker lines are uh, being a little sharpened. But then if I were to do this on some smaller lines, you'll see, you should notice that a bunch of the smaller lines become uh, more defined. So we've got essentially two sets of um, these wavy lines going on right about now. So uh, with that in mind, let's kind of go over what all of these sliders do. Uh, so first of all, sharpness. It, Sharpness is really, really straightforward. It's whether or not the lines are nice and soft or whether or not they're nice and sharp. So uh, if you have the sharpness all the way down, you should have some really nice and smooth lines going on here. But in contrast, if you were to put the sharpness all the way up, they'll become much more prominent, much more sharp, maybe even a little bit brighter, you know, stuff like that. So let's put this back down. The line width is, um, to say the least, it's like the thickness or the density of the lines there. So uh, we've got one set of lines that are just the, the maximum line width and then some that are nice and small. But if I were to increase the second one all the way up, we should notice that some of the, um, oh, hold on, let's put the radius up as well. We should lose some of those finer details and get some more broad uh, lines, broad strokes, and you know, uh, just just not so much detail in it. And so you'll notice that I put up the radius um, on that last little setting there. And the radius, uh, what's the best way to explain the radius? It's kind of like the overall size of the line. Like, let me show you what I mean. So if I were to uh, let's let's put up the sharpness here real quick, so you can kind of see these uh, this line a little bit more. So you'll notice that these broader strokes are, are nice and highlighted for us now and that they're really broad. They're really th uh, thick and wavy. You know, they're, they're not very tiny. So if we were to go and put the radius all the way down, you should notice that the, the scale of those lines gets reduced pretty dramatically. So uh, let's go ahead and put this sucker down and maybe we'll do the same thing for the other line, put up the sharpness, and you'll notice that we get a lot of those finer details again. So... Yeah, radius is kind of like the scale of the, the lines there. Okie dokie. So, uh, the diffusion, um, it's its a little harder for me to explain diffusion, depth, and scarify. The, the best way I can demonstrate it is to uh, kind of like show you like just by demonstration purposes. So, uh, with the diffusion, if you're to increase that, it kind of starts to uh, blend the lines with the details of the original image a little bit more. So if, uh, if you were to put that up, you, you kind of start seeing some of those lines apply to like, um, like those finer details, like the, like the whiskers and stuff. 
but if the diffusion is like down then you're not really going to see like the the original image quite so much and let's try putting this down to like the negatives just to see what happens okay so I don't know I don't know really the, the diffusion's a little bit weird for me I'm still kind of figuring that one out uh, the depth is kind of the same and you know what what the heck does it do uh, the thing that I've noticed is that by increasing the depth you essentially darken the image in certain areas so if I increase this you'll start noticing that the image gets a little bit darker here and there but if I were to put it into the negatives the overall image should get a little bit brighter so the depth is a, again a little bit weird still kind of figuring that out and Scarify essentially kind of like scatters and randomizes the strokes. So let's uh, let's put the Scarify up on both of these just to kind of see what it does. And so, like I said, you'll <laughs> you'll notice that these uh, these images become kind of um, kind of scattered and they become kind of like uh, random and noisy and fluffy and stuff. <laughs> fluffy and stuff. That was kind of funny. And uh, yeah, they're not really like they're not very smooth anymore. It's it's as if you took the lines and shook them around and made them scared, you know. <laughs> uh, it's kind of funny that I actually like shook my hands at the screen just now. <laughs> okay, so let's put those back down and we'll move on to the noise. Uh, the noise, for lack of better words, is kind of how busy the image gets. So if we were to put the noise all the way down it should smooth out the image a little bit more in terms of um, like the, the the brush strokes here and there and if you were to increase the noise it should become like more choppy and not quite so like pretty to look at but you know depending on what you're working with that might end up looking kind of interesting but personally I kinda like keeping the noise down simply because I like these nice uh, smooth and fluid brush strokes that we got going on here so that is essentially it for those sliders right there and if you look above them you'll notice that we've got these three different icons uh, this first icon represents the colorized mode and to be honest this one is it still baffles me what this does it just kind of it tweaks some coloring and shading here and there a little bit differently uh, when you click on it uh, I'm not entirely sure exactly how that that changes it specifically it's it doesn't really seem to do much from as far as I can tell now these uh, other two icons right here represent the uh, the line creation mode and um, so look at it this way right now these lines are essentially uh, creating the image they're being added onto it right now however if we were to click on each of these to invert that you'll notice that instead of adding to the image it, the lines are kind of subtracting from it instead so it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like give or take which one are you gonna do give or take and of course you don't have to apply both of those at the same time you can have you know one set add one set subtract and then maybe you can flip those around maybe you can get something a little bit cooler like that's actually kind of interesting looking if you would ask me I mean that's kind of it's kind of cool in it huh but uh, anyway, let me turn that back off and get back to the original style that we got going on here. Huh. I don't know. I guess either way, this is going to look kind of cool, isn't it? But sometimes it really doesn't look that great. It's just something to mess with. So let's go back down to the, uh, the lower portion here. Uh, the brightness, obviously, is just going to be like the overall brightness of the image here. The saturation, by default, is, uh, is boosted when you put up to glow 100. And, um, you know, saturation, is that's straightforward. You should know that by now, just, you know, the intensity of color and such. The scale is kind of similar to the, the radius of the brushes, but it's kind of like an overall scale kind of a thing. So if we were to put that down to zero, we should see everything kind of uh, get a little bit smaller in, in detail and such. So um, let's, let's see what happens when we put that down into the negatives. Holy jeez, that is... Uh, and that is not something that I was uh, that I usually mess with, but kind of cool, I guess. And the last and final thing on here is the mix, and the mix is it's kind of like the opacity between uh, the filter and the original image. So a, a mix of 100, it is 100% uh, opacity for the the fractal. Now, if we were to bump this down to maybe 50 then it's basically 50-50 between the original and the fractal. 
uh, or the fractalius, I should say. And then putting it down to zero will just, you know, just straight up original image. That's all there is. So that's straightforward. Uh, you can mess with that, you know, as you choose. And of course, you, we've got some some helpers here. You got undo, redo, uh, a random settings generator, which you can click if you just want to, you know, have some randomness applied. You really don't know what you're looking for. And of course, there is a reset for all the settings, which I guess it just kind of puts everything at like their uh, medium value and such. But um, I personally uh, don't think that looks so great. So let's just try and make something that looks kind of cool. Now, um, I do this particular effect a little bit too much. So how about I try going in the opposite direction here? And uh, let's see what we can create out of this. Um, let's put up the sharpness and the line width on that original there. Maybe not so much on the sharpness. Uh, let's put up the, the radius and the line width a little bit. So that's not too bad. Let's go ahead and mess with the, the depth here. And uh, let's see if I increase the depth. Okay, so that, that brightens it up because we're doing like the, the inverse of this. Uh, so that so before it would darken the image by increasing it, but now it's brightening it up. And uh, let's put down the noise, maybe uh, smooth things up a little bit. And let's, let's mess with the color mode to see if that does anything. So there is a slight difference. So I'll just keep that just as it is now. Let's increase the diffusion on both of these just to see what that does. Okay, so it's kind of making it more like whiskers and stuff. So maybe we can, um, let's mess with this a little bit more. Let's just see what we can get. All right, this is, you know, I think I might just leave it right there. Um, maybe I'll bump down the saturation just a little bit. And this kind of looks like a... I, I, I don't know I for some reason I get like a like a smoky fiery feeling from this because of uh, like how bright it is and some of like the strokes are kind of like receding into the distance like smoke I don't know I think this is kind of cool so I'll just uh, I'll hit the check mark here and see what we think <laughs> Wow that that looks even cooler when it's at 100% uh, there so um, yeah I guess this is uh this is you know this is just one of the the different effects that you can do on you know the same image you can do quite a variety of of different things now let's try the same thing on this copper lead here so the interesting thing about this picture is that um for the most part it's pretty uh it's got like the same color scheme all throughout kind of like in the the cat here but it's also very it's kind of flat in a way like like color wise so Let's um, let's go in and apply Fractalius here, and let's go and apply. Um, let's try let's try slow motion. Just see what that looks like. Whoa! Hey, check that out. Um, shoot. Uh, let's see. Maybe let's let's decrease the depth a little bit on both of these. I kind of want to brighten it up. Not maybe not too much. And uh, let's uh, let's get a second set with a smaller radius here. Maybe sharpen it up a little bit. Whoa! Let's let's increase the line width. See what that does. Holy geez. Okay, maybe maybe not so much on that. Um, let's smooth this out a little bit. All right. Um, and then maybe we'll also increase the brightness, see what that does. Maybe uh, that, that's not too great. Ooh, <laughs> that's interesting. Let's decrease the brightness. Let's see what happens when we decrease the scale. I'm, I'm, I'm literally I'm just messing with this as I go. I, I haven't really decided beforehand what I'm doing with this. So I'm just kind of, I'm doing whatever you guys would end up doing, just kind of messing with it as I go. Uh, let's put up the diffuse. Uh, maybe not that much. Let's put up that diffuse. Huh. So this is uh, this is getting kind of interesting. Let's go ahead and just see what this looks like, you know? Cuz I'm really kind of curious. And I'm I'm hoping it's done. Ooh. Let's full screen that sucker. 
All right. So, like I said, um, the this image was uh, you know completely different from the cat. So, like the the results are just you know that much more different. And instead of it you know like coming into some kind of shape, it's just like just randomness all over the place. And um, yeah, it's just just entirely different. So, um. I guess that's really all I've got for you guys. There's, you know, there's really not much more for me to show you. It's really up to you on, you know, what you want to do with this filter and what kind of images to apply it to. Uh, if you need any images that are like free to use that you want to, uh, you know, you know, just kind of have a demonstration for this, uh, I really recommend uh, going to uh, the Stock Exchange. Uh, I'll leave a link to that in the description. It is seriously one of my favorite websites to grab random uh, stock images and stuff. So yeah, I really hope that you guys enjoyed uh, this tutorial here, and hopefully you guys uh, you know really enjoy Fractalius if you guys decide to to use it yourselves. And uh, again, if you enjoyed this video, just give it a like, give it a comment, you know, give us some feedback. I really appreciate it when you guys do that. And uh, one last time, that's all I got for you guys today. You guys have a nice Tuesday. Peace out.